So this is one of the myths. You know, all proteins are equal. equal. <laughs> you know, if you sit down with your average dietitian and she says, okay, you need 0.8 grams per kilogram a day of protein. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a yogurt, there's eight grams of protein. If you have a balanced bar, Peanuts. there's 10 grams of protein. If you have a steak, there's 20 grams of protein. And if you have some peanuts, it's this much protein. Mm -hmm. And so we just add them up. And if you get to your number, let's say your number is 60 grams of protein a day or 80 grams of protein a day, you're good. And that assumes that they're all equal, mm -hmm. but they're not all equal. Now, they, if they're digested and they go into your system, there's, a, there's two pathways that can happen with a protein that you eat. So you chew it, it goes to your stomach. These, these proteins are very long chains of amino acids, okay? So some proteins are super simple. It's not really a protein, but like thyroid hormone right. is one amino acid. Okay, with some iodine on it. Mm -hmm. So that would be the simplest one. But then if you look at uh, actin, mm -hmm. which is the major mu pro muscle, muscle protein, right. it has over 5,000 amino acids in one muscle fiber. Wow. Okay, so you eat some muscle meat, it's got it chopped up into single amino acids because the, the long chains aren't absorbed. Mm -hmm. So they come into your bloodstream as amino acids, they go to your cells, and now your cell there has machinery to take the amino acids and make them back into human proteins. Right. Now, if the profile of the amino acids in that meat or fish or nut or, or you know, whatever you're eating uh, isn't right, the protein that you're trying to man manufacture can't be made. Mm -hmm. So let's say we want to make insulin or we want to make serotonin, or we, you know, we want to make some protein-derived um, uh, something. And, so, yeah. and the formula says, I need one of these, one of these, one of these, and there's a formula. Mm -hmm. so, the, so, the, so the amino acids arrived at the cell, and the, the, the machinery says, I need one of these, okay, I got one, put it on there. It's, it's like a string, it's like stringy beads. Mm -hmm. So put the bead on there. Okay, I need one of these, put it on there. I need one of these, oh, sorry, I don't have those. I'm low in those. Right. That thing doesn't get made. Now it's gotta wait for the next meal. Right. Now, there's about 200 or 300,000 proteins in the body. Oh. And this process is going on 24 hours a day, all the time. Repair proteins, make new proteins. These enzymes, liver enzymes, 15 minutes. You gotta replace them every 15 minutes. Wow. If you don't have enough of these things coming in, you can't do it. Right. And so what happens is the body gets backlogged. Right. That's illness. That's degeneration. Yes, that's frailty. Mm -hmm. That's no muscles. That's can't think. It's anxiety. It's can't sleep. Because these are the building blocks of the body. Wow. And so you've got to have them coming in or you don't get them. And so when you look at the value of proteins, of having the right amino acids to do the job, mm -hmm. we call it perfect amino because it is the exact perfect combination of what are called essential amino acids. There's eight that you can't make. Right, There's you have 20 to take or them 22 in. you got the, right. in total, right. but if you take in the eight, you can make the rest of Correct. them. Correct, you can complete a protein. You can make them. So if you take in the eight, these are the exact right ones so that your body can make any protein it wants. And so when it's measured, you can measure this. Like I took in 10 grams of perfect amino. Mm -hmm. How much of the perfect amino was made into body protein? 99%. 99%. Wow. Now, if you look at whey protein, and you can measure this, mm -hmm. how, what percentage of the whey protein that you eat, because the profile of whey protein of essential amino acids is different mm -hmm. only about 16 percent of it yes. is utilized to make body protein right. so now you got 84 percent of it is is calories it's a carb mm -hmm. okay it and like with whey insulin. protein it's very insulinogenic you right. see blood pressure spikes with it mm -hmm. or blood sugar spikes with it and you see insulin spikes with it mm -hmm. because it's mostly a carb yeah. yeah so the advantage of perfect amino is this is like exactly what your body needs so 
you know, if you didn't want to eat any protein and you wanted to just take pills or take powder, if you had about 10 grams, two scoops, 10 tablets of perfect amino three you'd, times a day. You'd be good for the day. You'd be good for the day. <laughs> and then you could eat whatever else you wanted. So a lot of things that we, a lot of times I get from people, hey, there's actually 20 amino acids that are non-essential and nine that are essential. That's typically what the information is out there. Right. Yes. And I typically say, hey, I'm going to follow this guy who's a 43-time <laughs> Ironman competitor, eight-time world champ qualifier, and is a badass. I'm sorry. So he says 22 amino acids and uh, eight are essential. That's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> Could you please clarify that and how that works? Because I... <laughs> right. So depending on who you read, they say that, that histidine mm -hmm. is an essential or a conditionally essential amino acids in old people and babies. It might be essential, it might not, but they add it in. And then some people say there's 10 essential amino acids because arginine is another amino acid right. and you need that. Right. So we did a little simple study. We took people's fasting levels of amino acids and we gave them 10 grams of perfect amino mm -hmm. and we checked their blood levels of essential amino acids 30, 60, and 90 minutes later. And what we found is that the levels of histidine and arginine went up after taking perfect amino. Right. So your body so can make them. Your body makes them. Yeah, so they're not essential. Now, they might be conditionally essential if you're eating beans and rice. Right. Okay? You know, depending on where you live and what, what your culture's foods are, mm -hmm. you may need those extra amino acids. Right. But if you take it in the form of perfect amino or you supplement with perfect amino, you don't need eight or 10. Right. Or you don't need nine or 10, eight. you need eight. Right. eight. There's an interesting story on this. Because the, 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 the FDA, Health Canada, mm -hmm. said that perfect amino couldn't be sold in Canada because it, it, it didn't have all nine essential amino acids. And so in order to get the product, this is some years ago, in order to get the product in Canada, we don't do this anymore, but in order to get the product in Canada, we had to add histidine. histidine. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Now, when we measured what percentage of it was utilized, without histidine, it was 99. With histidine, it was 94. It went down. Oh my gosh. It isn't as good. Wow. So if you take the eight essential amino acids, they are complete. They're 99% utilized to make body protein. And they're a perfect supplement for virtually anyone. You know, if you're an, a housewife and you have a cup of coffee and a bagel for breakfast and a salad with four ounces of chicken for lunch and some vegetables and maybe, you know, another small protein portion, mm -hmm. you are going to be protein malnourished. Yep. You are, I can guarantee you. Yep. And we measure, I've measured these in really thousands of people. All vegans are protein malnourished. Yeah. All vegetarians, I'm saying all, almost all, mm -hmm. uh, vegetarians are protein malnourished. Right. You just can't get enough right. for what the body needs to keep up and keep healthy. So we just say, okay, um, if, you're, you know, if you don't want animal products, pro, uh, Perfect Amino is vegan, right. okay? There's no animal stuff in there. So you could supplement it and if you enjoy that lifestyle, fine, do it. Or you're doing it for spiritual reasons, no problem. Yeah. Just supplement with the things that you need so that your body doesn't deteriorate as you age. So for people who are doing an HCG diet or any re like extreme restrictive diet, yeah. I did see that you explained that if they took perfect amino with a diet, right, they did not lose any muscle. But those who didn't take it, lost muscle and you state that you lose about one pound of muscle for every four pounds of weight that you lose right correct right it's lean body not just muscle right lean body but when you do that diet and you lose 20 pounds okay Muscle's which which could happen and so you you've lost you know for every 20 pounds you lost five five pounds of muscle it's a lot of tissue body mass body. you try back. to get that back yeah, that's a lot that is very yeah, hard very and hard. to regain it especially if you're older is going to be yeah. very hard that's right so and one I'm sorry, one thing i want to say because you said something here so when in this country we hear malnutrition we're thinking about somebody from a third world country yeah right you can have somebody who's overweight has a lot of extra body fat and is protein malnourished mm -hmm. absolutely right? it's common it it's isn't so even common. unusual it isn't unusual in this country yeah. 
No, but the average person doesn't think so. So right. when they see somebody who's overweight, they'll think, oh, this person is not malnourished, she's overnourished. Right. Right. But with the wrong um, building blocks and you need the protein. Right. I think this is what's important. I really want to get to our patients. Yeah. How important, how much, are, you know, who would build a house and not get cinder blocks? Right. right? You're going to build a house and you don't have the building blocks. Right. So this is the important thing. I really want everybody to understand. And one other thing you said was about the, the utilization of protein. So not all protein are made equal. So when I hear patients again who tell me, well, I take enough protein. Okay, let's look at what you're taking. Yeah. So really important, really important. Yeah, and to your point, you know, it's, it's, it's even more important. We were talking about this earlier, um, you know, with the kind of uh, advent of, of the keto ketogenic diet that has become so popular. And by the way, very good, but now when you look at the supermarket, it's like everything has whey protein. Keto Every, everything is made with whey protein and people think it's just that. Oh, I take all my protein shakes and my protein bars and they don't know that most of it is sugar. <laughs> right. And this is why they get frustrated. It's like, I don't understand. I eat protein bars and I go to the gym and I still don't lose weight. Well, there's your answer. Right. So another question that I've had from patients, again, and usually when I get a lot of questions from patients, this is what I want to clear up. You, on an interview with Dr. Frank, you, you stated that you guys had a guy who ate pasta, fruits, and vegetables, and took 10 grams of perfect amino three times a day for two years, yeah. gained 20 pounds of muscle. Yeah. My question is, yeah. so is it safe to say, and could you potentially replace eating meat with just taking perfect amino safely without any uh, side effects. You can. Mm -hmm. yes. But what's the fun of that? We need a combination of them. No, no of course. I, we no, can. Of course yeah. we, we, we can. can. I'm just saying for the vegans that don't, you know, yes. they don't want to yeah. eat flesh yes. and they're protein deficient, then yeah. take perfect amino every day, right? Yes. yes. And it's Probably not it's too. not gonna cause any issues. No. And and the last one that we're big on, we're big on intermittent fasting. And we know that every 10 grams has four calories of perfect amino. Right. Right? So what I understand, it, it is gonna break you out of your fast temporarily and stop Sound the autophagy enough. very little, but it won't shut down ketosis, which is really what you want to break down body fat. It doesn't, it doesn't, we've studied this too. Okay. There's no insulin response. Mm. Okay. Okay. So if you got a carb load, you're gonna get an insulin response. Mm -hmm. So you take 10 grams of perfect amino and you measure a fasting insulin and then you measure insulin 30, 60, 90 minutes later, you don't get an insulin response. No insulin response. You don't get a glucose response. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've done, I've done it so with a glucose. So it doesn't monitor. break your fast from calories because four calories is a piece of gum. Right. I mean, I, but I understood that four calories breaks your fast. No. Okay. No. Does it? No. Good. No, okay, you can good. do it. We demonstrate. And I think here's right. the other. Awesome. Here, here's the other thing that's important. When you let's say for in the morning you had your last meal at six o'clock at night. Uh -huh. So by eight o'clock in the morning, you're already fasting. Mm -hmm. You are catabolic. Mm -hmm. You are breaking your body down. Mm -hmm. Okay. There is no pool of amino acids in the body. Mm -hmm. Fat. Fourteen hours. Anytime yeah. there's no pool. Right. I mean, we have pools of fat. Mm -hmm. We have pools of carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have glycogen. We have stores of it. So if the body needs some, it can pull it out. Right. With proteins. There's no storage. Mm -hmm. It's of the flesh. Right. Okay. So by 16 hours, yeah. you are catabolic. The body needs amino acids. It's trying to do repairs on some stuff mm -hmm. and it's going to take your proteins and That's break the them down and make new ones. Mm -hmm. So what I say to people is as soon as you get up in the morning, take 10 grams of perfect amino because mm -hmm. you want to spike that anabolic thrust. Right of like, okay, we're gonna repair now. Mm -hmm. Because we've been in an 18 hour or 16 hour time when we couldn't really repair very well. Right. And then, and and that gets people going. And the four calories, don't worry about the four calories. I, I, mean, I don't. I agree. <laughs> I don't. The last question I have for perfect amino yeah. on people who have osteosporosis, most yes. doctors will prescribe or tell them to take calcium, but calcium alone can build bones because you need these substrates of essential amino acids to make bone. Could you share a little more insight on that? Yeah. I mean, giving calcium to someone with osteoporosis doesn't fix their bone. Right. A bone is a collagen base. Okay, so the structure is a form of collagen. In the old days, they used to make a plaster wall. So it's called lath and plaster. They would put little wood, wooden strips on the wall, and then the guy would come with the plaster and he'd smear it on. So there was something for the plaster to stick to. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay? Our bones are basically built the same way. There's a, there's a collagen structure, framework, mm -hmm. and then calcium and phosphorus get stuck on there. Now, if a person is amino acid deficient, if they're protein deficient, mm -hmm. the, the collagen structure starts to break down. And so instead of, if this was a, if this was like the collagen structure and we were going to stick bone on there, mm -hmm. and now because of breakdown, 30% of that structure is gone. Let's say going from 20 to 60 years old, 30% yeah. of the lean body mass. And so 30% of the bone mass is going to be part of that, that now you've only got this wow. left. You can take all the calcium you want. It's not going to, it's, it's not going to make a difference. Anything. You're not going to rebuild the bone. Right. You have to give the the osteocytes, the osteoblasts, mm -hmm. these are the bone cells that make bone. You have to give them amino acids and they make this, and they make this, and they make this, and they make this. And then you got enough vitamin D and you got enough calcium and you got enough testosterone and you got these various things that are important in this. And now you make new bone. And now the bone density and you give them, you know, you got to give them enough exercise or you stress it a little bit, right. you know, deadlift squats, things like that, where they start to build bone. Now you do their bone densities a year later and it's like, oh my God, we're not osteoporosis anymore. Wow. The bones are healing. Incredible. But the important thing is amino acids. And virtually nobody who leads the field of, of, of osteoporosis is talking about this at all. Nobody. They're pushing medications mm -hmm. that don't really make new hard bone. Mm -hmm. So it's, this is the key to it. Optimizing your health is only a scan away. Select the QR code that fits your profile best, and we look forward to hearing from you at the Medical Health Institute.